Hello and welcome. So the other day I've finally gotten around to doing the USB-C mod on an iPod Classic 6 Gen. It's all working now. It does connect to iTunes, does charge and everything through USB-C, which is pretty cool. Although I will say before we get started, this is actually quite a difficult mod uh, just because the pads we solder to are really small. And if you don't have um, good soldering skills, it's probably not doable to be honest. Also, you need a um, hot air rework station to remove the old 30 pin connector properly. You can probably get it off by prying and tearing it off and using a soldering iron as well, but I wouldn't really recommend it. The proper way to remove it is with the hot air rework station. And yeah, when I do this mod, I do do it under a microscope as well um, because I have one and I always use that when I do micro soldering type stuff like this. Uh, but I understand most people don't have a microscope. So if you are going to undergo anything like this, I would recommend getting one of these little helping hands tools with a magnifying glass. Uh, it'll make things a whole lot easier. You might be able to get away with just that for a USB-C mod, I don't know. It's definitely a lot better than just using the naked eye. That's probably going to be basically impossible. You can barely tell the pins apart if you do that. Uh, but yes, let's get into it. So uh, this did actually take me two attempts. So I'll be showing both of those attempts now just so you can see the mistakes that I made and hopefully learn from it. So the first one that I used was an iPod Classic 7th Gen board. Uh, this one had previously had a replaced charging port and a replaced battery connector, although it still wasn't charging, to be honest. When you plugged it in, it would connect to iTunes and it would say it's being charged, but it wouldn't actually receive a charge. So I thought this would be the perfect board to attempt this on first, uh, just because if it did end up working, we could salvage the board, but it didn't. And I did make a bunch of other mistakes. So, oh uh, well, it was a good, good board to sacrifice for a first attempt here. So yeah, these are the uh, USB-C connectors that I'm using. I uh, just got a bunch of these generic little ones off of AliExpress. They have a bunch of pads you can wire directly up to. Um, there's just four pads that we have to wire on here. There's just positive and negative, and then data plus and data minus. So in terms of what we're actually doing here, it's pretty straightforward. It's just everything's really small and yeah, you need good soldering skills to actually pull it off. Another thing to sort of watch out for here is the amount of clearance we have, because as you can see, the flex cable for the hard drive is right down there next to the 30 pin. So we have to be mindful of how far back um, this thing is going to stick out, because if it interferes with that, we might not be able to plug our hard drive back in. And well, that's obviously not good because we need a hard drive to use the iPod. So first things first, just disassembling the um, iPod here, taking off all the parts because we need to remove that 30 pin connector. And yeah, as you can see here, I'm putting on some captain tape to cover over all the sensitive parts. This is some heat resistant tape that will stop us from cooking the rest of the components on the board when we use the hot air. Uh, this stuff is, I wouldn't do it without it because you can actually pretty easily kill some of the chips on the board specifically like the CPU and all that stuff. Um, yes, I have done that before when learning how to change charging ports on this. Yeah, so the charging port replacement on this is something that I've done multiple times before and it does take a bit of skill to pull off. Um, it's not the type of thing you'd get on the first go, so... Or you might, I don't know, depends how skilled you are with soldering, but... Yeah, the PCBs on these iPods are really thin, so it's very easy to stuff up if you don't really know what you're doing. And unfortunately, the port has to be soldered directly onto the board as well. Not every device is like that, but the iPods are. So yeah, as you can see, just removing that connector there. And if you're wondering what temperature I'm using on the hot air rework station and all that, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's dependent on a whole range of different things, like the amount of time you hold it there, the distance you're holding it from. Each temperature on each machine is going to be different as well. But if you must know my settings, it's on 100% air at 395 degrees Celsius, I'm pretty sure. And as you can see, it just comes off like that, using a lot of flux, obviously. And after it's off, what we want to do is just tin all those pads there because the solder they use from the factory is lead free solder and it just flows a lot worse um, so just retinning all the pads with some nice leaded solder will flow a lot easier and the solder that's already on there is probably completely oxidized as well after you take that off now uh, the next step is to figure out the pin out of the 30 pin connector 
Um, now, there is a good website that just straight up tells you everything you need to know. So I'll put that in the description, a link to the website. And I'll put a picture as well of all the pins we need. But if you don't have access to something like that, or you just need to figure something out for yourself, uh, this is how you do it. I'll just take apart a old charging cable and just have a look at where those pins are actually wired up to. As you can see, there's only four wires in the uh, 30 pin. The rest of the other pins are used for a whole range of other things like accessories or fire wire charging or audio just a bunch of other things this is a bunch of accessories and docks and stuff you can plug into these iPods and good thing I did search up the pin out because the black and the red wires on this little aftermarket charging cable here were actually wired up to the wrong pins so if I went off of this I would have ended up frying my um, logic board yeah and when I first saw that I got all confused because it was telling me the wrong thing from the pin out diagram that I was looking at. So I just, well, I plugged in a Nano 2 board and then just used a uh, multimeter to actually read out which was the five volt pin, which worked. And it confirmed that the um, pin out I found online was correct. And that little aftermarket 30 pin cable was completely dodgy. So yes. And now uh, for our wires, you want to use pretty much the thinnest wires you can find. You may even be wanting to use those copper coated wires or whatever. Those are really thin. Yeah, so just tinning the ends of these wires. These are probably like 30 gauge or 32 gauge. I don't know. I pulled these from an old charging cable. Just the thinnest ones I could find. Yeah, that's how I usually get my wires. I just recycle them from old electronics. Yeah, and now just soldering these up. So for the pins, what you want to go is USB data plus on pin 27 or pin 4. Depends which side you're counting from, but I'll put a picture up of exactly which pins you want to use. But yeah, pin 4 is your data plus. So use your colored data wire. I'm using a green one in this case, or you could use a blue one or whatever color you have. Just make sure you're using different colors and colors that make sense. Cause if you mix things up, you know, things can get a bit confusing and stuff. So yeah, uh, data plus on pin four and then data minus on pin six. And we got our five volts on pin eight. And then our ground wire is on pins 15 and 16 which you can just bridge together and do one wire off of two pins which is a little bit easier to solder on there so it is actually kind of a little bit difficult to wire the wires up to the pads since the pads are so small and if your wires fray or go too much to the side they can easily bridge to the other pads uh, and that's why it's important to use a really small wire because if your wires are too thick they're just not going to fit on the pad so yeah i wouldn't use any bigger than the wires i've chosen to use in this video to be honest so uh, a couple of mine did fray so i had to re-strip them down you want them to be fully tinned if they're not fully tinned on the wires um, and you, you can still see some of the wire itself it's also going to be difficult to put on as well so you just make sure you're tinning them fully and make sure you got like a pretty decent blob of solder on the pad as well and yeah this is where the microscope comes in really handy because everything is very small here and without it you mightn't even be able to tell if your wire is touching the pad next to it or something like that uh, but yeah just make sure you don't bridge any connections and make sure you've got everything wired to the right pad again i'll have the picture on the screen because uh, if you do get it wrong you could potentially fry something which won't be good so yeah after we get all these wired up on to the next step uh, now i hadn't figured out how i wanted to mount the usb port on at this stage so yeah, so my first idea was to just super glue it on right next to it there but yeah as you can see we've got the hard drive connector back there which um we have to be mindful of so on this first attempt what i ended up doing was chopping the back off of that usb-c connector and i thought i'd just wire straight up to the pins on the um usb-c port instead of the bigger pads that it had there i just wire directly to the port and then i thought i'd super glue the usb-c connector straight onto the logic board which ended up not being a very good idea it just ended up falling off straight away pretty much so as you can see what i'm doing here is i'm putting on this it's called solder mask and what it'll do is it'll protect our pads from short circuiting because i'm pretty sure uh, super glue is conductive so if i just super glued the port straight on top of those pads we would probably be causing some sort of short circuit which i wanted to avoid so yeah the way this stuff works is you just put a thin layer across the whole board and then you grab out your uv light and it'll set and it'll set pretty hard and yeah then you can put your um 
thingy straight on top of it but yeah it didn't work as i said before it just ended up peeling straight off the second that i tried plugging it in so oh uh, well you learn from these things that's why the way I did it on the second try was much better, but I'll still show you the process anyways. So yeah, ended up tinning the uh, back of the pads. I scraped away some of the PCB to make it easier to solder to, but you can't really see what I'm doing here. The camera just doesn't go in far enough. I might get a camera for the microscope since the microscope has a mount at the top. So you'll be able to see exactly what I'm seeing when I use it. Uh, Cause what I do right now is I'll just put the phone like behind it and you can kind of see what I'm doing, but it's not the view that I get from under the microscope. So yeah, what I did was I just glued it on straight away and then wired the wires up one by one. Um, and I cut them very short because we need as much space as we can possibly get here. And you mightn't think of wires as taking up a lot of space, but in projects like this, when you've got them running everywhere, they do take up quite a bit of space. So yeah, I just cut them as short as possible, which as you can see, yeah, and I thought this would give us enough space to plug in the uh, hard drive there, but it ended up being an extremely tight fit, so I wouldn't recommend doing it like this at all because it didn't work for me. So yeah, now just putting everything back together and giving it a test here. Yeah, my first attempt at putting the iFlash back in, I ended up destroying the flex cable because it was on such a strange angle and I ended up peeling the battery connector off the motherboard again since it was held on very flimsily so I soldered that back on plugged everything back in and as you can see the iPod will boot up here so it all works and now plugging it in this is into wall power first as you can see the port just pretty much snaps off the board straight away so the UV glue on I mean the uh, super glue on the solder mask didn't stick at all uh, but yeah it didn't end up charging so I'd wired up everything correctly so the charging issue I was having with this logic board may have been a board issue and not anything to do with the port it might have been some other component on the board uh, but yeah I did plug it into my computer and as you can see it made the USB USB sound and it connected and everything worked fine in iTunes so that told me that everything with the wiring was good it was just probably a board issue as to why it wasn't working with the other cable uh, but yeah I decided to just scrap that whole attempt and start again uh, because yeah the battery connector ended up ripping off a second time and pulling the whole trace with it so that board's pretty much toast at this stage uh, but yeah luckily I do have a big pile of iPod Classic boards with lots of different issues. So I took another one with a broken charging port and I th yeah, thought this would be another good one to use here. So first of all, just taking everything apart again and back under the microscope we go and again, putting the um, captain tape on so we don't fry any of the components and just putting a bunch of flux on the board again, taking the port off as we did last time, exactly the same way, using as much flux as we can, because that just makes everything flow a whole lot better and come off a whole lot easier. And now back to soldering our wires on again in the exact same way we did last time. And unfortunately, I did run out of storage on the phone I was filming on here. And I lost all the footage of me actually wiring the port on, which is a shame. But I mean... Uh, it's very straightforward what I did. Just put the four wires back on the ports and then as you can see, uh, wired them up to the holes here on this um, little USB-C board. And I did file down the uh, connection points on the back there so they're not sticking out. Now just reassembling everything. Now I wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna mount this at this stage. So I sort of just freestyled it a little bit. Yeah, so after everything was plugged back in, I noticed that the port would fit pretty much perfectly if we just shoved it in like this. And then I thought we could super glue it onto that little bar that hangs across the top there. Now it does stick down a bit, so I thought another good idea would be to put a spacer sort of underneath it to lift it up a little bit, which I ended up just using some uh, PCB as a spacer. I just cut some off of some other old dodgy motherboard that I had and used that as a bit of a spacer. Uh, but now that I'm looking at this again, uh, this, I think this would have been a bit better if I had wired those wires coming off of the uh, bottom of that USB-C board there because they're sort of smashed up against the uh, flex cable for the iFlash. So we'd have a little bit more clearance if we put them coming out the other side of the port, uh, but that's okay. It still ended up working. Yeah, so now at this stage, plugged in the battery and got that connect to iTunes screen. And now just coming over here, Plugging it into the computer, as you can see it turns on and makes the USB-C sound and connects to iTunes. And now we can just reset it. I did have to reset it again because I changed SD cards. There's no point in using a 512 gigabyte 
SD card on the 6th gen since the 6th gen can only see 120 gigs so put in a 64 gig one just for the sake of this mod gave it a restore in iTunes put some music on it and tested that everything was working um, and that's when I realized that if I super glued the port in at this stage I wouldn't be able to lift the eye flush back up to put in the headphone jack flex so I had to take everything apart a bit again here plug in the headphone jack flex and then I ended up super gluing the port in and put some spaces on the bottom underneath it just to hold the port up because as it was sitting at the moment it was just sort of slanted down at an angle so you can see what I do here yeah, I've got two bits of PCB and yeah as I screw the screws in for the um, like on the sides of the front plate there it sort of squishes everything down quite firmly and it actually makes the USB port sit in there pretty securely so yeah it doesn't feel like it's moving around at all or anything which is pretty good because you want it to be in there pretty firm although it is pretty firm I don't think I'd be comfortable selling this mod as like a service on my website at this point in time just because it's not held in there properly it's just held in there with super glue and like I have confidence enough of it staying there to use myself but I don't have enough confidence to sell this to somebody else at this point of time so I will be working on a USB-C mod in the future that I can sell, but not at this point in time. I wouldn't do it like this and sell it to a customer just because if it does come dislodged, then they're going to have to send it back and that's just going to be a whole nightmare and a whole bunch of headaches. So I might in the future, either I'll do it with the Oxil kit or I'll design my own sort of thing that solders directly to the PCB and that'll be a whole lot easier. So I do have plans to do a USB-C upgrade service on my website in the future but for now i will not be offering that uh, but yeah i thought i'd just do this tutorial anyways so if you wanted to do it yourself you can and yeah now for the final tests plugging it into the charger now that everything's sealed back up and as you can see it is fully working and we are charging our ipod now and yes so before we finish up i thought i'd go over the little cover i made for the uh, charging port down here um, so what I ended up doing was I took that little plastic bezel that originally sits in there and I shaved down the protrusion so that it didn't stick out at all. And then I just took a white piece of plastic and cut it down to size to fit in there. Although, like, it's hard to cut it so that it fits around the USB-C port. So uh, I only did that for half of it. And then I just glued that in. And then for the other half, I just took some of this liquid electric tape that I had lying around, which was already half dried, and I just sort of shoved it in there to fill in all the gaps. Uh, and that stuff sort of dries hard like plastic when it fully dries so yeah it should hold up pretty well and it, it doesn't look perfect but I think it's better than nothing so yeah originally I wasn't going to add this cover because I was going to put a little switch next to the USB-C port so we could um, do a Bluetooth mod that still kept the lock switch but yeah I thought the video felt a little incomplete without going over a solution for this so overall this mod is actually very useful i didn't realize how handy it is to have everything coming off the one cable i didn't know why everybody was going all crazy about a port but now i guess you'd only need one charging cable you don't have to worry about having a bunch of different cables so this mod's actually pretty useful so yeah if you liked it give it a like subscribe to the channel see you next time bye